Every film series with a recurring cast has a standout member. The Carry On film series had Sid James. He didn't start as a comedian and wouldn't call himself one. That didn't mean his characters weren't hilarious. They were often rude or womanizing, but ultimately lovable. What the world didn't know was how similar they were to the actor. Keep watching to learn why Sid James lived with his dark obsessions for his entire life. Sid's Early Life Solomon Joel Cohen was born in South Africa on May 8, 1913. He tried a variety of jobs, including being a diamond cutter, dance tutor, and boxer. He eventually took up the family business as a hairdresser. He first met his wife at a salon in Krudstad, Orange Free State. His father-in-law Joseph bought him a salon, but that didn't last long. He decided he wanted to be an actor within a year. He worked with the Johannesburg Repertory Players and the South African Broadcasting Corporation. He also wanted to help the war effort during World War II. He served as a lieutenant in the Union Defense Force Entertainment Union. He moved to the UK in December of 1976 when his time with the war was over. He financed his dreams of being an actor using his service gratuity, but then got scouted and began his successful career. Sid's career. Sid began his acting career in his native country. He then moved to the UK where he began to find a few bit parts. The future comedian made his film debut in 1947 with two serious crime dramas, Night Beat and Black Memory. He then appeared in 1949's The Small Black Room. His first notable comedy film was 1951's The Lavender Hill Mob. It was one of his first successes and ranked 17 out of the best 100 British films by the British Film Institute. 1956's Trapsezi was also one of the most successful films of the year. His first appearances on TV weren't as successful. The 1958 comedy series East End West End was cancelled after six episodes. Sid gained more fame after that by appearing with another notable comedian, Tony Hancock. He was impressed by Sid's work on The Lavender Hill Mop. They started working together in 1954 on the radio series. He was the only member of the original cast that stayed on when it became a TV show known as Hancock half hour. The beloved duo ended their professional relationship at the end of the sixth season of the show in 1960. They remained friends, but Sid was upset at the decision. It made him change the type of roles he accepted. He no longer wanted to play a lovable rogue and turned down the role of Fagin in the 1960 production of Oliver because of it. That was until he got the chance to join the Citizen James TV show from 1960 to 62. He got a lead role in Taxi from 62 to 64 after that. He also appeared twice on The Eamon Andrews Show and Viva Torbay, traveling the British seaside in 1968. The roles that Sid is most known for are the Carry On film series. He replaced Ted Ray, who was having contract disputes during 1959's Carry On Teacher. His characters were often called Sid or Sidney and shared his lovable ruffian persona. That, along with his trademark dirty laugh and core blimey catchphrase, made him a favorite. He became a leading member and one of the most frequently featured members members of the Carry On cast. He appeared in 19 of the films and got top billing in 17 of them from 1955 to 1960. He went on to find more parts after that, but his health problems and harmful habits began to catch up with him. His popularity from the Carry On franchise let him get almost any role he wanted and he became a workaholic. He had a heart attack in the 1960s but wasn't willing to give up the allure of celebrity status. He couldn't stop drinking or smoking but did agree to drink less and switch from cigarettes to a pipe. His last roles before his death were the 1970s sitcoms Two in Clover and Bless This House, the latter of which got a film adaptation in 1972. Sid's Dark Obsessions Gambling If there was one thing Sid loved more than acting, it was gambling. The issue was he wasn't very good at it. He lost tens of thousands of pounds in his lifetime. He also hid the extent of his dark obsessions from everyone. He made an agreement with his agent, Michael Sullivan, to keep his wife from knowing how much he got paid for any job. That way, he could set aside a portion to gamble with and not set off any red flags. He also made sure the rest was given to his family. Women If there was another thing Sid loved more than acting or gambling, it was women. This dark obsession wasn't well hidden. He was married three times. He was a well-known ladies' man and couldn't stay loyal to any of his wives. His first wife was Bertha Sandy Delmont, also known as Toots. They were married in 1936 and had a daughter named Elizabeth. Toots caught him in affairs with multiple other women. She forgave him for the first few, but they got divorced in 1940. He married a dancer named Meg Sergei in 1947. They had a daughter named Raina and were divorced in 19. 
1952. His final marriage was to Valerie Elizabeth Patsy Assan, known by her stage name Ashton. They had a son named Stephen and a daughter named Sue. Sid made them a house to live together in Delaford Park in the last years of their marriage. It was close enough to Pinewood Studios for him to go back and forth while filming. It wasn't far enough from the allure of Hollywood to keep him from getting into trouble. Sid had an affair with his Carry On co-star Barbara Windsor that lasted three years. He was allegedly obsessed with her, and her family fought back. Her then-husband, Robbie Knight, even supposedly had all of his furniture rearranged as a threat and put an axe on his floor. Sid's close friends, though, deny these claims. The final affair was dramatic and a favorite for tabloids of the time. It was even the inspiration for the 1998 stage play Cleo Camping Emmanuel and Dick and its 2000s TV adaptation Core Blimey. There were also claims he was violent with his biographer Cliff Goodwin, who says he struck his girlfriend and first wife while they were pregnant. The truth is unclear and it doesn't seem to match up with accounts of his attitude. The women he went with always seemed to forgive him, and his third wife said he was always a loving father. Is there a doctor in the house? It's a constant feature in comedies. Something strange goes on during the show, and the audience laughs it off, thinking it's part of the production. This happened in real life to tragic effect for Sid. He was on tour, and everything seemed to be going fine at first. Then all of a sudden, he collapsed on stage. His co-stars Ogalo and Audrey Jeans thought the comedian might be playing a trick on them. They knew it wasn't a joke when they gave him line cues and he couldn't respond. Technical manager Melvin James called for the curtains to close and asked that well-known question, is there a doctor in the house? The audience thought it was a setup and kept uproariously laughing. A doctor did eventually realize what was going on and came to help. An ambulance rushed him to Sunderland Royal Hospital, but it was too late. Sid James died of a heart attack at age 62 on April 26, 1976. He was cremated with his ashes scattered at Golders Green Crematorium. Sid, like many artists, got more fame and respect for his work after his death. Critics thought the Carry On movies were boring or uncouth, while he was alive, but changed their minds later. They said his humor was the center of their charm. He also received praise from other sources. He's had an impressive amount of posthumous honors and tribute media. He was the subject of at least five tribute shows. The Heritage Foundation also installed a commemorative plaque on the former Teddington Studios on Broom Road, Teddington. It stayed there for 30 years until it was stolen in June of 2015, just before the building was set for demolition. It seems someone had such a close connection to Sid's legacy, they couldn't even stand to see this minor memorial removed. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Sid? Let us know in the comments section below.